Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHope2018.com. In this video, I want to talk about how God's judgment of the Great Flood might represent God's judgment during the Tribulation period. As I stated in my last video, I know that it sounds cool to say that we are in the Ark, Christ being our Ark, but I believe that the safety of the Ark represents those individuals who are preserved through the Tribulation period. In Christ, we are gone before the rains begin. If you know anything about this ministry, you know that it's pre-trib. We're not preserved through it. And you also know that I love numbers. Now, we can argue about the exact year of creation, but according to the Hebrew calendar, and I, I can't remember the last time I looked at my own, the one hanging in my office with pictures of horses on it, Adam was created in May. It all began in May. We can talk about spring representing a new beginning, which I believe it does, but I believe we can also talk about spring as the beginning, the beginning of everything. Based on scripture, we can learn that the flood began in the spring, and just as important, I believe, Noah left the ark the following spring. I find that fact alone highly compelling. And the reason I do is because if we have a timeline with 2550 days from rapture to return, whatever season the rapture is, that's the season of the return. If, if that 2550 days starts in May, it's going to go to May. And so, and if it starts in September, it's going to go to September. We all know that Adam, man, was created on the sixth day the last day of creation before God rested on the seventh. And we know that Noah was 600 when the flood began in the spring, and that there is sufficient evidence to cause us to believe as creationists, 6,000 years of man will end with a thousand years of peace before eternity begins. I believe based upon the Hebrew calendar, Noah left the ark on the first day of the week, month two, day 27, according to Genesis chapter 8 verse 14. Just as Jesus was raised on the first day of the week, I find that interesting, Matthew 28, 8. We know Jesus is called the firstborn of every creature, Colossians 1, 15, the firstborn of the dead, uh, Colossians 1, 18, and many brethren, Romans 8, 29. He's called the first of the first fruits in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The first of many to be resurrected to eternal life. That's the first resurrection. Uh, Revelation 26. Uh, Christ referred to himself as the first or the alpha, the first letter of the Greek language in the book of Revelation. Jesus returns on May 14, 2025 on our timeline. That's spring. Israel's 77th birthday. According to the Hebrew calendar, Day 27, month 2, which is the ARC exit date in 2025, is May 24, 10 days after Jesus returns. That's only a difference of 10 days, which really doesn't bother me at all because it paints a picture of the tribulation beginning in the spring and ending in the spring. Not beginning in the summer, ending in the summer, or beginning in the fall, and ending in the fall or beginning in the winter and ending in the winter. 10, the number 10 is viewed as a complete and perfect number. We know that the completeness of order is what it represents. 10 commandments, the Passover lamb was selected on the 10th day of the first month. The 10th day of the seventh month is the day of atonement. There's the 10 toes of Daniel 2 and then there's the 10 horns of Revelation uh, the ten generations of man that lived on the earth before the flood waters came, ten patriarchs. Noah was the tenth generation. Even a tithe is ten, a tenth of our earnings. There's the ten plagues that God sent on Egypt in order to free his people, which represented his complete and total judgment. And what I find intriguing is that Noah did not enter or exit the ark in September, but in the spring. Genesis 7:11 in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month the 17th day of the month 
the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. You're looking at springtime. Whatever year the creation was, and, and there are diverse opinions on that, the Hebrew calendar will always show that day to be a spring date, where Noah exits the ark the following year in spring. There's just no getting around that in Genesis. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat, uh, Genesis 8, 4, that would be September, the month of Tishri, and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month, and in the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen, Genesis 8, 5. That's late fall, early winter, near the winter solstice. Uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth probably didn't dive into the water to swim. And it came to pass in the 600th and the first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Genesis 8:13. That's April, spring. This tells us that the exact day that the ground was dry was a spiritual new year on the Hebrew calendar. Spiritual New Year. I found that interesting. I didn't even, I didn't know that. I'm reading here, you know, it's, it's in the, the, the 600th and the first year, uh, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. So that's a spiritual new year. They spent the winter shivering in the ark. Well, I'm, or I, I expect Noah probably kept a fire going to keep themselves warm, but it was the season of winter. And in the second month, on the 7th and 20th uh, day of the month, 27th day of the month, was the earth dried, and God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, Genesis 8:14 14 and 15, completely dry in May or June. So we're looking at spring. I can't help but be reminded of Matthew 24, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. We know that's talking about the second coming. But, for as, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That second coming. Noah entered the ark in the spring and he left it in the spring the following year. We often look at that passage as des describing the moral condition of humanity, the state of, or condition of things in the world, or, or I should say lack of it, lack of morality at, at the time of our Lord's return. But it's difficult for me to not see the time factor related to it as far as seasons go. We can't get around the fact that Noah entered the ark and left the ark in the season of spring. Not summer, not fall, not winter, but spring. It's hard to see Adam being created on day six, the flood occurring when Noah was 600, the six days God created, resting on the seventh, and the closing of the 6,000 year rule of man leading to the final thousand years, totaling 7,000 years, is not relevant to this discussion. Of the evidence that we've com here at Blessed Hope 2018 have compiled that seems to point to the prophetic significance of spring, the flood appears to join forces with all of the rest of it, as was the season of creation itself, which was the beginning of all things. According to the Hebrew calendar, from the day Adam was created on the sixth day, May 10, the 3980, to the first summer solstice marking the end of spring, July 25th, is 77 days. In other words, Adam had 77 days of spring before the season changed to summer. We had 77 days this year, 2018, to when the spiritual new year, 5778, began on March 18. It's, uh, I believe if you count January 1, 2018, to March 18, 2018, the spiritual new year, it's 77 days inclusive. So yeah, I believe the Great Flood Judgment mirrors the tribulation period judgment because I can't get around the fact that Noah didn't enter or exit the ark in any other season but spring. 
He wrote out the flood through the summer and the fall, spending the winter in the ark before exiting onto dry ground in the spring. This Pentecost timeline, if the rapture occurs on Pentecost, it sees the tribulation beginning after 30 days on June 20, 2018, which happens to be the summer solstice. That's when we spring ends. Change of season. And what a change of season that'll be. Now, when I shift this 2550 required days along the timeline of human history that's ahead of us, which I've been doing for two years now, shifting it back and forth, seeing where these days land, where they begin and where they end, I still find it compelling that this, this 2550 days fits precisely in between Pentecost this year and Israel turning 77. I, no one's shown me anything more appealing than that. I've, I've found no other place that it fits better. I can't say dogmatically that the rapture will occur on Pentecost, but everything does point to 5778-2018, given the Revelation 12 sign is come and gone. And from the Revelation 12 sign to the beginning of the tribulation, June 20 this year on our timeline, is 271 days. And is it not strange, and I've pointed this out before, that the scientific average of human gestation or conception based upon Nagel's rule, the following all has a Jewish gematria value of 271. Pregnancy, conception, childbirth, nativity, habitation, origin, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and the day from the night. All of that has a gematria value of 271. If the Revelation 12 sign was in fact a warning to Israel and a sign to the church, then this would line up perfectly. Now, I'm not showing you the facts so that you can decide about anything. I'm just showing you the facts to keep you awake and alert, to keep you watchful and sober, because our departure is drawing near. I want you to think about this one fact. If our Lord is not now standing at the door, if he's not at the door, then everything that we've witnessed in our lifetime, everything that we have seen occur in this, in this generation, the past 70 years, and particularly the last year or two, is the greatest, would, it would be the greatest delusion ever to overtake the body of Christ, in my opinion. I'm, I am but one of many watchmen on the wall, and I will, Lord willing, remain at my post, sounding the alarm until the Lord takes me home one way or another. It's up to you to decide how all of this will affect your thinking and your actions. I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. I'm just passing along to you folks what I have found to be exciting about these days of which we are living. Look, I appreciate every one of my followers. But I don't care if you like or dislike this YouTube channel. I don't care if you like or dislike this video or thumb it up or thumb it down. I don't care if you ever agree with me on anything or not. Though I will, with great passion, present what I believe is the truth. It's actually rare that I ever invite anyone here. If you are here, it is because God has directed you, led you here. And if you should leave, it's because our sovereign God moved you somewhere else, and that for your benefit, because that is all he cares about. I am not anybody's guru. I'm just another watchman on the wall, one of many, in what I believe are our final days before he returns. Now, in the flood, the two temples the year that they were both built and destroyed, the total years that they both stood, the death of Moses, the life of King David, and Israel regaining its statehood in 1948. In all of that, we can see a connection to 2018 or 5778 on the Hebrew calendar. The year we entered into, March 18. The first temple was built in 832 B.C. It was destroyed 422 B.C., 3338 on the Hebrew calendar. It stood for 410 years. 
The second temple was built 352 B.C., 3408 on the Hebrew calendar. It was destroyed 70 C.E. It stood 422 years. So both stood for a total of 832 years, the same years that the first temple was built. The flood occurred 1656, Hebrew calendar. Moses died 2488, Hebrew calendar. So it was 832 years between the flood and Moses' death. From when the first temple was destroyed, 3338 Hebrew calendar, to the building of the second temple, 3408 Hebrew calendar, is 70 years, which was destroyed in 70 CE. We know King David lived for 70 years. We know Israel was reborn in 1948. Go forward 70 years to 2018 or 5778. Now, these dates have been confirmed by scripture to be accurate and they have been made widely available on the web. There's a lot of signs pointing to the uniqueness of 5778, both on earth, on land, and in the heavens. So I, I believe that we are not only in the year, I believe we are in the season, that the rapture is that near. That's what I believe. And you have the grandest privilege of not having to agree with me on that. Now, I want to do a, just quickly address a couple of questions that I was asked by viewers. Uh, Steve, why do you think Jesus ascended 40 days after his resurrection and did not finish the counting of the Omer up to the 49th day. Well, I thought about that, and I, I believe it's because Israel and the church are distinct from one another. Israel rejected their Messiah. The Jews count the 49 days, seven times seven weeks, 49, from the day of Passover until Pentecost, which anticipated the approaching day that they received the Torah on Mount Sinai on Pentecost but the Jews do not recognize Jesus as their true Messiah, much less his resurrection or his ascension. The church counts the 49 days, seven times seven weeks, 49 from the day of Passover until Pentecost, which anticipated the day that they received the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Well, another way of putting this is, on, I'm, and this is what I believe, I believe that on the very day that the Jews we're celebrating Omer Day 50, the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai in Jerusalem. The disciples were in the upper room receiving the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. The very fulfillment of the law, of that law. Jesus didn't complete nor celebrate the counting of those 50 days with his people, the Jews. He ascended after 40 days and 10 days later, a new covenant was born, a covenant of grace, not law. I was asked, Steve, could the earth really be billions of years old and it not conflict with Genesis? I don't believe so. 6,000 years, not billions, literal days, literal years. God tells us why he created the sun, moon, and stars, and that's so man could tell time. This is a nonsensical purpose if the evolutionary story of 13.8 of billion years or whatever is true. In that case, for most of the years of existence of those heavenly bodies, they would not have accomplished the purpose for which they were made. Our Lord himself believed that man was created at the beginning of creation, not billions of years after the beginning, as, as all old earth views imply. His miracles confirm the young earth view, from his first miracle of turning water into wine to all of his other miracles. His spoken word brought an immediate, instantaneous result, just as his word did in creation, in, in calling forth light out of darkness. And finally, there was no death before the fall. Such theories deny that fact, pointing to death before Adam was created. So much for the cleverly devised fables. Second Peter 1.16 For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. 
So I'll end on this note. The year of creation is widely disputed, so just take this with a grain of salt. It does seem interesting, though. Aliyah of Messiah. It's something I talked about in one of my previous videos. The end of the line, so to speak, according to the Hebrew calendar. It's where the 6,000 years would end. We know the Antichrist is allowed to rule the last half of Daniel's 70th week. So I guess it's possible. So I just thought I'd pass that along to prove a point. This stuff that we're doing isn't easy. But every time I see something that interests me, you know, or even muddles my head a little more about everything, I just think the rest of you ought to, ought to suffer as well. So look, I love you all. I truly do. I also appreciate all of your kind messages, your words of encouragement and support. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.